In this video, I'm going to show you how to hide and show a navbar when you scroll down or up using Next.js and Tailwind. As you can see, as we scroll down, the navbar gets hidden and when you go up slightly, it comes down again. I'm also going to show you how to make it responsive for mobile screens as well. We're going to start from absolute scratch and I will be explaining every single line of code. So, let's get into it. So to start this project, here I have this empty folder. We're going to create a new Next.js project inside this folder. Let's open the terminal and we're going to use this command to create a new Next.js project. npx create dash next dash app at latest. Let's copy this and paste it. For the project name, I'm just going to use a dot so it doesn't create a new folder inside this current folder. Other than that, we are going to select default answers for the rest of the questions. It shouldn't take more than one minute and it is already created. There is one more package that we need to install, which is React Icons. So npm i react dash icons and that is it. Let's run the project on the browser using npm run dev and here is the project. Let's minimize the terminal and we can start by cleaning this page.tsx up. I'm gonna delete this entire div. So before we start to create the navbar, first we need a couple of sections inside this website that we can scroll down and up. So let's quickly create that. Let's make this div cover the entire page by setting it to minimum edge screen and set the width to 100%. Let's make it a flex container and change the flex direction to column and center the items. Inside, we're gonna have three sections which are also going to cover the page. Set the width to 100%. This one is going to have a black background and center the text inside. And inside, we're only gonna have this H1 that says section one. Let's make it just a little bit bigger. And copy and paste this two more times. Let's change this one to slate 900. And this one to gray 800, section two and section three. And this is how it looks. Now we can start to create the navbar. Inside the project folder, we're gonna create this folder named components. And inside, let's create the navbar.tsx. Inside, we're gonna create a functional component using a shortcut, RAFCE. This shortcut comes from a extension named React Snippets. You can install it from the VS Code extension store. And here is the component. Next, we need to make sure we place this navbar in the right place, which in this case, it will be inside the layout. So inside the layout, we have the root layout, which basically returns the HTML and a body. Also, we have this children, which basically represents every other element that we are going to create. They are going to be displayed inside this body. So if we want this navbar to stay on top of everything else inside the page at the top, that means we're gonna make sure we place it at the top of the children. So let's import navbar at the top. Let's also wrap the children inside a main element and give it a padding top 16. So now whatever contents we have inside this main, even if we have routing, and switching between pages, navbar is going to stay on top of them. Actually, you can see it at the top over here. Let's go back inside the navbar and start to create it. So first of all, this component is going to be using some hooks such as use state and use effect. And that basically makes this component a client side component. So we need to declare that at the top by saying use client. Otherwise, it is going to get treated as a server-side component, which will cause errors. Now that we have taken care of this, let's import everything that we are going to use. As I said, we are going to be using use state to control the state and use effect from React. Also, we're going to use link from Next.js. We're going to use use path name 
We are going to use this to determine which page the user is in by checking the URL. And we're going to use that information to highlight the tabs. And we're going to import a icon, which is Next.js fill. This is just a Next.js icon that we are going to use inside the navbar. And for the responsiveness, we're going to need this menu icon and a X icon. And that is everything that we are going to use. Now, inside the navbar, we can start by defining two state variables. First one is going to be is visible and its setter function set is visible. And the initial state is going to be true. We're going to use this to keep track of if the navbar is visible or not. And at first, it's going to be visible. That's why we set it to true. The second state variable is going to be for keeping track of the mobile navbar. So is mobile menu open and set is mobile menu open. And initial state is going to be false. We are not going to be displaying this mobile menu unless the viewport gets smaller. And we're going to create a variable for path name as well. Next, we're going to create the logic for hiding and showing the navbar. For that, we're going to use use effect. And we want this use effect to run as long as this component is mounted, which is why we place empty brackets as the second argument. And this effect is going to basically run every time when you scroll. First, we need to put the scrolling event in a variable to determine the last scrolling position. Let's create a variable named last scroll y and set it to window scroll y. Next, we're gonna create the function that is basically going to decide if the user is scrolling or not, control navbar. So we have the last scroll position and now we need the current one. So we're going to create another variable named current scroll y and we're going to set it to the current scroll position. And we're going to use these two variables to compare each other. And by doing that, we are going to learn if the user is scrolling or not. So if current scroll position is bigger than the last scroll position and current scroll position is more than 100. This basically means if the user has scrolled and they are scrolled more than 100 pixels, then we're going to set is visible to false because we want the navbar to be hidden when you scroll down. Otherwise, if they are not scrolling or they are scrolling to the top, then we're going to show the navbar again by setting set is visible to true. And finally, we're going to update the scroll position by setting last scroll y to current scroll y. And now we need to use this function. We're going to use this as a event listener. And the event that we are going to listen is a scroll event. So when the scrolling happens, this function is going to get executed. Let's also have a cleanup function, which basically removes the event listener if the component gets unmounted. So with this, we have basically completed the hide and show logic. Next, we're going to create a array named nav links. Inside, we're going to have a couple of links with attributes such as href with the label home. This one is going to be about this one is going to be services and this one is going to be contact. And finally, we can start to return the UI. Let's return a nav element, which is going to have dynamic styling. So let's open up a set of curly braces with backticks. It is going to be fixed with 100% background white and a little shadow. We're also going to create a little animation for hide and show. So let's use transition transform and set a duration of 300 milliseconds. And by setting Z index to 50, we can make sure it stays on top of everything else inside the page. And using dollar sign and curly braces, let's create this condition. So if is visible is true, then it's basically going to stay in its position. Then it is going to be visible and if is visible is not true, then we are going to move it to the top with minus 
translate y full. Inside the nav, let's create another div and set the maximum width to 7x large, mx auto to center it, give it a padding x of 4, bigger than smaller screens it is going to be 6, and for large screens it is going to be 8. Inside, we're gonna have another div which is going to be a flex container with justify between and height of 16. Inside this, we're gonna put the logo. Let's create a link for that. Inside, we're gonna use the next icon and let's make it bigger. So outside this div, but still inside this one, we're gonna create the desktop navigation. Let's create another div, which is going to be hidden. And for screens that are larger than medium, it is going to be flex center the items and give it a space of x8 inside we're gonna map over the nav links array and for every link gonna create a link element let's give it a key link.href and a href of link.href oops there's a little typo here So inside this link, we're going to display the label and we're also going to have another dynamic styling. So let's open a set of curly braces. Let's set the text to gray 600 and when you hover over it, it is going to be 900, padding x3, padding y2, rounded corners, text medium and set the font weight to semi bold and we're going to have a transition for the colors. And this is where we are going to use the path name. So if there is a path name and if we visit that path, then text is going to be blue 600. Otherwise, it is going to stay the same. Next, we're going to create the mobile menu. Let's create another div. And for the screens that are bigger than medium, it is going to be hidden. And for smaller screens, it is going to be a flex container with item centered. Inside, we're gonna have this menu button and if is mobile menu open is true, then we're gonna display the menu icon with text 3x large. And if the menu is open, then we're gonna display the X icon, text 3x large. Let's create a on-click event handler. So when you click on this button, we are basically going to reverse the state of is mobile menu open. So if it's open and you click on it, we basically flip the state and we close it. Let's style this button as well. Inline flex and item center, justify center, padding two and rounded corners, text gray 600. And when you hover over it, gonna make it 900. And the background is going to be gray 100. When you focus on it, we are not gonna have any outlines. And we're going to have this ring of two pixels. And we're going to change the inset of the ring on focus. And it is also going to be blue 500. And finally, right under this, we're going to create the menu itself. Let's open a set of curly braces with backticks. For medium screens, it is going to be hidden. Transition for the animation. Duration 300. And the transition is going to be ease in and out. So if the mobile menu is open, then we're going to set its maximum height to 64 with opacity 100%. And if the menu is not open, then we're going to basically hide it by setting the maximum height to 0 and opacity to 0. Let's also hide the overflow as well. Inside this div, you're going to have another one with PX2 and padding top 2, padding bottom 3 and space between the buttons, space Y1. Inside, we're gonna map over the navigation links again. And for every link, we're gonna create a link element with the key link.href and href of link href. Let's define a on-click event handler. When you click on this button, you're gonna set the state of is mobile menu open to false because when you click on a button to visit a certain page, we want this menu to be closed. Also inside the link, we're going to display the label. It is going to be a block level element, padding X3 and padding Y2, rounded corners, 
text base and font weight of medium and again a condition with the path name so depending on the path name gonna turn the text to blue 600 and background to blue 50 and for the other labels it is going to be gray 600 on hover it is going to be 900 and background is going to be gray 50 so looks like i have made some really small mistakes i forgot to style this logo let's give it a color of text gray 800 and finally we're gonna move this mobile menu outside this container with the height 16 so right over here now let's see if everything is working fine and as you can see as we scroll down the navbar gets hidden and when you scroll up it comes back again the responsiveness works as well and as you can see it works well no matter the screen width the mobile menu is working fine as well so this is how we can show and hide a navbar using Next.js and Tailwind. I hope you guys find it helpful and enjoyed it. Thank you for your time and I'll see you on the next video.